Hey everybody, it's Mrs. C again, and we've been getting ready for our final exam, and there have been several questions out there with uh, confusion about solving quadratics, uh, using the quadratic formula, solving quadratics by the graphing calculator, solving quadratics with factoring, and there's a lot of you that are just confused as to how you're supposed to know which method to factor with, or to, excuse me, to solve with, and I'd like to clear that up for you, but I don't know if my answer is going to make it easier or maybe more confusing, because the answer is it, it doesn't matter, honestly. You pick whatever method you want, and you hope that it works, and if it doesn't work, you try another method, and by work, some problems are just uh, easier than others. Let's admit it. So here's a problem that I'm giving you. It's a quadratic. How do you know? Because it's leading coefficient. Uh, be excuse me, not because it's leading coefficient, because its highest degree is a 2, and that makes a, this a quadratic um, trinomial equation. So how can, we f how can we solve? Well, first of all, we could solve using the quadratic formula. We could solve using the graphing calculator, which is my favorite, uh, or we could solve by factoring. We could at least try to solve by factoring and see if that gets us the answer. Now, I want it said the quadratic formula solves everything. So when in doubt, just use the quadratic formula to solve because you'll always come out on the positive side. Well, it might be a negative answer, but you'll come out good because the quadratic formula solves all quadratics. It does not discriminate against certain ones not working. So you know what I would do um, if I'm not doing a calculator, and I'm not necessarily using a calculator right now, uh, I'm just going to solve with quadratic formula, find out what the answer is, and go from there. So let's find out. Let's solve. Let's see what the answer to this thing is. So you solve using a quadratic formula. Well, it starts with knowing <laughs> it starts with knowing the quadratic formula. You know the quadratic formula. Negative x equals, oops, sorry, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now I told you, you've got to know this formula. I don't give it on any test, quiz, nothing. So memorize. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my a over here, my b and my c, and I'm going to plug them in. Now, Notice everybody is on one side, zero, on the other. That means I'm in good form to identify who the A, B, and C are. The A is 2, the B is a negative 28, and the C is 48. You might be saying, my goodness, these are big numbers. I don't really want to work with these numbers without a calculator. So, fine, let's not work with these. Let's... Oh no, she's erasing it. Yes, she is. Let's simplify this this equation a little bit. Is there something that I can do to both sides that uh, would make life easier a little bit? Well, notice 2, 28, 48. They all have what in common? Absolutely, a 2. So let's divide the entire thing by 2. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do it to the other side. That's the only rule. So, well, there's lots of rules, but that's the one in play right now. Divide everybody by 2. That means divide 2 by 2. Divide negative 28 by 2. Divide 48 by 2. And divide 0 by 2. So 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 28. 14 times. Watch out, that's a negative 14. And 2 goes into 48. 24 times. So let's write down the players. We got x squared minus 14x plus 24. All right. That's what we're dealing with right now. Equals, well, what's 0 divided by 2? It's still 0. Awesome. So what I want to do, we said uh, we were said we were going to do quadratic formula, so let's do it. Oh, these are much more manageable, a, b's, and c's, aren't they? See why you always want to look for a GCF? It makes life easier. So 1, a negative 14, and a 24. So let's see. I know you're thinking, but you erased the quadratic formula. That's okay. 
The more you write the quadratic formula, the better off you are anyway. So we'll just do it again. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let's put in the values. We have a b is equal to a negative 14. Negative 14. We have a b, negative 14. Oh, uh, what else have I got? Oh, an a and a c. I lost my train of thought there. An a and a c is 24, and a is 1. Well, that's a big old mess. Let's clean that up. We've got um, negative times a negative is positive. So I have x equals, you'll per, please pardon my poor structure here, but I'm running out of room, plus minus the square root 14 squared. Oh my goodness, 14 squared. That's going to require me to think. Uh, 90, 196. All right, I got it. 196. Oh my, but these numbers are small and I'm still struggling. What was it? Minus 4 times 24. 4 times 24. All right, 4 times 24 is 96. I know you're thinking, how hard, Ms. Crusoe, you got a calculator? No, I don't. <laughs> Over 2. All right. So many places I could have screwed this up. I'm hoping I didn't. I hope you're watching, looking out for me. And will let me know if I screw up. If you yell loud enough, I can actually hear you from where I am. All right, we got 14. Stop yelling. 14 plus minus the square root. Now look over here. 196 minus 96 is 100. That's going to be a lot easier than writing all that extra work. So here we go. We're cleaning everything up. We've got 14 plus minus the square root of 100. Square root of 100 is 10. Woohoo! Whoa, that was supposed to be it. That was supposed to be that. <laughs> Stop yelling at me. You're throwing me off. 10. Okay, so I have 14 plus minus 10 over 2. I just need to know what those answers are. 14 plus 10 is 24 over 2. And 14 minus 10 is, well, it's 4 over 2, right? Signs, checking, thinking. Yes, it's positive. 14 minus 10 is 4. These are my two options. 24 divided by 2, that's this one, is 12. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. These are my two answers. Okay. Using the quadratic formula, I know that x was equal to 12 and 2. That's where I'm at at this point on the equation, ooh, on the equation, can I remember what it was? I know you can. It was, because you were looking at it, right? 2x squared, was it minus 48x, and it was plus, no, I know, I know, I hear you, I hear you. It was 48 was here. Thank you for helping. You are so awesome. I'm looking for... 20, this was 28, wasn't it? Wasn't that 28? I don't know. At this point, I don't know anymore. I'm going back over. It was 12x squared minus 28x plus 4. See, I told you, if you yell loud enough, I can hear you. All right, so this was the original equation equals 0, and now we know that x is equal to 12 and 2. And we know because we used the quadratic formula, and I just want to say we could have done the a, b, and c of 2, negative 28, and positive 48, but you saw how much I was struggling just with the little numbers. And um, these were even bigger, so squaring numbers, and when they're big, if you've got a calculator, it's no big deal, but I'm sitting in my living room right before school, 633, and I don't have a calculator on me. So, you know, I want to work to, the, to my advantage which is to stay away from bigger numbers and work with the smaller ones. So I told you you could solve anything with a quadratic formula, so there it is. Uh, but factoring is so much easier if you can factor. So I want you to remember that the answers were 12 and 2, because I'm going to erase them. I remember that the answers were 12 and 2. But I want you to take a look at this little quadratic. Do you remember how we were able to get the GCF was 2? 
and we were able to divide everybody by two and, and shrink those numbers down, that technically, guys, that's factoring. And so even when I solve with the quadratic formula, I used factoring to help me out. And that's what factoring was made for. It, it helps you get to the end of the problem without screwing up by sh kind of shrinking down the numbers. So when you solve by factoring instead of solve by the quadratic, you're just using the problem the way it's set up to make it easier for you to do the math in your head. Let me just show you what I mean. I notice that this equation has terms that have common factors. So what I do is I factor out the two that I know they both have in common. When I say factor out, I'm saying do this. Take the two on the outside because it's a factor of all of these numbers and just rewrite it this way. Now remember, this should not look new to you. We, we already did this. And you're saying, yeah, but when you did it before, you divided both sides, both sides by two. Here you're not. I could divide both sides by two if I wanted, but I'm trying to show you how to just use factoring to help you. Now, I factored out a 2, and that's awesome, but I want to ask myself, have I factored this as much as possible? You always want to look inside and say, is there any other way I could factor? Well, you learned how to factor a quadratic trinomial using some product. So I could factor this even more. you got to keep the 2 on the outside and tell me some product. What is it? What two numbers go together to add to be 14? or negative 14, and times to be 24. Pause for a minute if you're not sure. All right, so the two numbers, after you think about it, are 10 and 4. 10, no, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not 10 and 4. I Stop yelling, I hear you. The two numbers that times together to be <laughs> 14 and 24 are... I'm listening. 12 and 2. Yes, those of you who don't get it, 10 and 4 don't give you 24 when you times, they give you 40. So, okay, let's try this. 12 and 2, if I add them, I get 14. 12 and 2, if I times them, I get 24. Signs would have to both be negative. This would have to be an x. Okay, so now I have factored this to 2 times the quantity of x minus 12 times the quantity of x minus 2. Now when we solve by factoring, we set each factor equal to 0 and see what the outcome is. So I'm just going to move everybody up. And erase this bottom. I wish this program would do an update so that I could scroll down and not have to do this. Set each factor equal to zero. I know you're going, why did you just set two equal to zero? Well, just because I want to show you something. Each factor, anybody timesing to anybody. So factor one, factor two, factor three. Set each factor equal to zero. Two can't be equal to zero. That's not a true statement. And if that happens, in life, you just say, mathematically awesome, but uh, logically it doesn't make sense, so you just exclude that possibility. We're looking for viable options here, not things that don't make sense. So take these two. Well, let me see. What would x be equal to in this case? x would be equal to 12. Oh my goodness, that's what I got when I did the quadratic formula. And look over here. Oh my goodness, again. These are the two answers I got. This one makes no sense. So the two answers that make sense are the two answers using factoring. So I know that the answer is x is equal to 12, x is equal to 2. And that was because I could factor this problem. Not all quadratics are factorable. And if they're not factorable, for example x squared plus 15x minus 2 equals 0. Let's look at this. That only way we could possibly factor a quadratic trinomial with this leading coefficient of 1 is just by some product. We have to hope that some product works. Well, I made it so that it wouldn't. 
There are no two numbers that times together to give you two and add together to give you 15. That's never going to happen. So I have no choice. I have to use the quadratic formula. I can't use factoring. So that's the difference, guys. Quadratic formula works all the time, but it's involved. It takes time to get the answer. Factoring works some of the time, and it's oftentimes easier and quicker than the quadratic formula. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work all the time. So there's a give and take in everything in life, don't we know? <laughs> there's never one way that always works that's the easiest of all the options. So um, I hope this cleared it up for you a little bit. What I'm going to tell you is when in doubt, use the quadratic formula when you're solving. It will always work for you as long as you work slow and steady. Come on to class, ask me your questions. You know I love you, and I always will see you on the flip side.